Yes, folks, it is true. My paradise on Italian Island has beat Elon Musk to Mars. This is the, we're going to call it the shark fin spaceship. And uh, we can probably launch this thing in just a couple of days. But uh, we're going to beat Elon Musk to Mars, that's for sure. I'm telling you that right now. No way can he get ahead of our schedule. We are here. We got the shark fin spaceship being built as we speak. Bye for now. All right, we're putting finishing touches on the shark fin here. But just in case, you know, when we go to Mars with the shark fin spaceship, if there are Martians, we're going to need a blast deflector. And this is our blast deflector here. The other, uh, the other part that we're going to need when we get to Mars because we may be making those Martians pretty dang angry showing up on their planet uninvited. So we got the blast deflector here. And we got the uh, shark fin spaceship here. Now, like I said, we're going to be ready to launch any day now. So bye. Okay, everybody, just in case we have a problem with uh, shark fin one spaceship we're building, shark fin two spaceship now. We can actually go to the other side of Mars, or to the North Pole and the South Pole with the two starships. I'm sorry, shark fin spaceships. So, whatever we want to do, east and west, north and south, doesn't matter. We can do it, and we're building it. So, here it is. Shark fin 2. Dun, dun, dun. So, I'm going to uh, lend a hand here. And I'll be back with more. My paradise on the Italian island. We're on our way to Mars, right. baby. I don't think Elon Musk has anything on us. Look at that. That looks like a spaceship, doesn't it? That thing's going to Mars. Well, maybe to another island. But anyway, we will be back with more. My paradise goes to Mars. Bye for now. Hey everybody. What we're doing today is resting our hats on the tip of the boat while this is the back actually. And we're going to cut the uh, stainless steel plates. So these are two. There's one more, but it's here, but I can't lay it down for you because it's on a long piece of stainless steel uh, flat bar. But you can see the marks there. I got to cut here and cut there. And that's the third piece. That's the third piece. That's number three here. That's the ninth inch. Three, six, nine. And then we uh, we got the uh, the uprights. I'm gonna call them shark fins for now because when you stick them up there, they look like a shark fin. But we gotta also put something on the top here, the tarpaulin uh, support, and you'll see that it'll be a V-shaped thing going opposite directions for the front and rear. Uh, but there'll be a V-shaped thing there to, that points towards this tarpaulin upright holder here. So the tarpaulin has a straight line, a, a straight edge to the next uh, support. So I'm going to start cutting these right now. And we will be back with more after I cut them. I'll lay them all out and you can kind of see it. And I'm doing two layers, of course, now. So i got one layer here. Uh, this is the first layer. It'll be epoxied and screwed or bolted to this, this rear deck. The other one will be welded to the bottom of that. And then that plate will screw through through here uh, with bolts and nuts on the bottom of the, of the two by fours there. You see the two by fours there. So, and that'll hold that on so it doesn't rock and roll too much. Because we're in the ocean and it's rocking and rolling all the time. So we're going to try to beef it up, you know, make everything... Uh, kind of rock proof, rock and roll proof. So we'll be back with more from my paradise on Italian Island. Oh, we got the grinder. Yeehaw, we got the cutter, cut off wheel, cut off blade. And we're gonna do it. Bye for now. All right, everybody, what I did, I did my first cut and it's just a score as you can see, you can maybe see the depth there. 
if I get down. See that? You can see this. You can see the depth there. I just score it, and then I just work that score back and forth until it's until basically this falls off. If you try to cut all the way through and cut like that, like you're cutting with like a like a wood saw, you, your blade will get twisted in there and it'll bust and shatter and stuff goes everywhere. And it's spinning at 15, 15,000 RPMs. I don't know how I many, 12, 12,000 RPMs right there. And that'll shoot that stuff in your leg and your face and your eye, whatever. So just score it and work the scores back and forth until it falls off. And then you're good to go. And then, of course, uh, round all the edges because it'll leave razor sharp edges everywhere. So I'm going to do that, and we'll be back with more. Finishing the cuts. Bye for now. Yeah, baby. Hey, everybody. That's going to be it. Cut. Just finish the cut. And the last one, I need to trim this top. It's a little bit sharp edge there. Round that off. Smooth it out. I've labeled... All the stuff. I've labeled these rear one, rear two, and rear three. You see they're in a little bit because we want a little epoxy roll here on both sides. So that was rear one. This one here is rear two. And I should have made a little lineup mark, but it's okay. That's rear two. I'll draw lines here. Just a few lines so that when we well, when you well, just flush up the ends and you're good. That's how good these are cut. These are so far so good. The two are done. This one here is still a little bit hot, so don't touch the end. It will burn your finger and whatever you touch. Okay, so we got it right here. So that basically is the plate. That is epoxy to the deck here, epoxied and screwed. And we got a little quarter inch. We got a little more on this side than we need. It's not centered properly yet. Right there, about maybe three sixteenths of an inch of uh, rollover, where the epoxy is going to come up to here and then just roll over the side, so that it's a smooth transition. So that's it. It butts up against this, so that's easy. And nine inches should be here, according to my measurements, but we're a little shy. But that, uh, and again, I'm going to call it shark fin, is almost exactly that much short, too. So maybe this isn't nine, maybe this is nine. Well, I got a ruler right here. Let's see what nine is. Let's see. Nine is. Yeah, we're about an eighth of an inch shy of nine right there. So whatever a third of an eighth is, a twenty-fourth, is what each one of these is short of three inches. So I'm not going to worry about it. It's going to work fine. Okay, so I got those done. Now i got to do three more that go on top of here. So I'm going to cut those now. I'm going to mark and use uh, these ones to mark. Well, you have to be careful because that felt tip pin marks adds another about a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch on each side. So if I mark it, I'm going to have to cut on the inside of that um, felt tip pin. I'm using a felt tip pin. I have an ink pin here too, but I don't think the ink pin is going to draw on that. But I could try it. It'll get a little closer to an accurate line. So let's see. We'll do that, and we're going to mark them, and we'll be back with more from my paradise on Bentayan Island. Yeah, baby, we're getting ready to, well, we're making the sh rear shark fin mounting, well, not, well, mounting, bracing, whatever you want to call it, mounting and bracing, mount brace, brace mount. All right, right everybody, now. this is basically going to be the front tarpaulin support here. It will have a little, I've got a one by one square bar. Uh, stainless steel square bar that'll go on the top there and it'll actually stick out some like that about that far and then I'll have another one and a half by one rectangle bar going from where that sticks out angled back towards this tarpaulin su support so that it's in line with the edge of the tarpaulin pointing to where the tarpaulin is going to connect to this hole 
So I got to get those angles right. But right now, we're going to do the same thing we did there. We're going to make the plates for here. And I got another piece of the three inch here that I'm going to have to make two of these with. And hopefully I got e enough. That's only about five feet. And hopefully five feet will do it. Back here, I used a whole piece of that minus this little piece and two other pieces that I had are ready. So this is the rear. So as you see, there's actually two of these. There's two of these. This one, this one here that I got laid out here is welded to the, and again, I'm going to call it the shark fin because that sounds cool. Is welded onto here. These are epoxied and with countersunk. They have countersunk bolts. Actually, these these here are Phillips head screws, but they got uh, well, I mean, countersunk Phillips here. And these will be permanent, so I don't mind having a Phillips head because Phillips heads will strip out. So these will be countersunk Phillips bolts. And under here, they've got nuts and lock washers and uh, flat wa wa washers and, and that. So this is a real bolt with a Phillips head, countersunk. And that's what these will have. They'll, they'll be bolted through, uh, all the way through the two who by fours and then nuts and lock washers and flat washers uh, securing them. And this will all be epoxy and polished. I'll, it'll be polished like everything else is polished. And then this will be all, as I said before, of course, these will be welded here all the way across. This will be one, this will be one plate. It'll be polished. And then we'll drill holes in the countersunk things, just exactly like we did these over here. How we did these, these are all shiny with the countersunk screws holding them in. These are wood screws here. These aren't bolts. And I had to use wood screws because I can't put a nut on the outside of the boat. It would look funky. And it also exposed to water. So anyway, this will be uh, bolted with countersunk Phillips head bolts. And then this is what the, uh, the shark fin will weld to. And that again will go on top of here. And then that will be bolted with actual nuts and bolt bolt heads because that's got to be removable so i got to take that off and on off and on so that's got to be something that's going to hold up fill up screws will strip out and then you'll be screwed <laughs> so anyway i got to cut these got to measure these but i had to figure out where what the position i want because they've got a couple of marks here i got one there and one there but i'm thinking going forward that leaves me plenty of room here to wrap a rope around this it shouldn't interfere with uh, tying anchors up and stuff like that. Should be any, and the further forward I move it, the further forward the the tarpaulin is, and the more shade we get, and rain protection going over to there and everywhere else. Because the back of this here, that if I put the tarpaulin at this point and not extend it out this way, it would it would end about right here. See, and I'm only this far, so wind, and rain, and stuff like that, sun, whatever, people are sitting here, or whatever they're doing, uh, they wouldn't be really protected very well. Ne neither would the boat, so we get more rain, water in, in there and stuff, and we don't want that, so that's why I'm doing it. So I'm going to cut these, I'm going to mark these with this plate, and cut them, and we'll be back with more from my paradise on Bentayan Island. Bye for now. That's the shark fin, the front fin. We'll call that the tail fin. This will be the dorsal fin. Bye for now, everybody. <laughs> All right, we did it. We got these, uh, this plate here. What happened was I ran out of flat bar. And I didn't have enough for this one here, so I'm splicing it. But we'll weld it and grind it and polish it, and you won't even see a weld anywhere on this it shouldn't there should be no welds showing once they're ground and polished but this is all the material <laughs> that i had left and the interesting thing is when i made all the the cross beam uh stainless steel things i had a little four inch piece left that was it so all my materials amazingly are working out thank god i guess because <laughs> i'm just guesstimating this stuff but anyway we got uh our plates made so this is the bottom plate 
that is epoxied and like, like I said, screwed slash bolted to the deck here, the, the, the front bow. And these are the ones that get welded to the bottom of that over there. So, in fact, I can probably demonstrate that pretty quickly. Honey, will you uh, hold the camera? Honey, the camera's running. Hello? Where, where um. am I? So, this one is the front one. The front one's two inches taller than the back, and that's to make it so the rain runs off. Now, obviously, these are all going to be on top of here, so what I'm doing here is just doing straight up. You need this. to be in this lane. The, this gets welded oh. onto here like this, see, right? Like that. So that'll be welded to that. This, this here will bolt and unbolt from there. We'll bolt and unbolt from here. We're also going to have another crossbar about five inches up here, and then we'll have uh, like a little well going down to here, and another one on this side going here to give it some uh, strength, you know, you, you know, support from swinging sideways. So this is the, the well here, and let me just put it this way to goes, having to deal with these little rubber lines. So anyway, pretend this is that, that well's here. Right from here, lined up with the cleat, of course, and then, like I said, we'll have a crossbar here, right here, five inch, inches up, and then we'll weld like another one of these pieces from here down to here, and from the, the top of that crossbar down to here, so it's structurally uh, sound uh, in every direction. So that, my friends, is how we're mounting the shark fin. Again, shark fin. So, just so you see, this, this will go here, right here, right here, right here, and this will be, of course, welded to all of that. Voila. Okay. So, it's the same setup here. We have the two plates, one epoxied and bolted to the blue deck, the other one welded to the shark fin and braced like that just like that so that'll be there and that'll hold the tarpaulin up in the sand and that's 68 inch, inches high this one's 70 because this is for the front. The front's two inches. This is 70. This is, the other one's two inches shorter, but for demonstration, it looks the same. So that's it. So we will be back with more. I'm going to the Rover and have you in Rovers. Bye for now. Hey everybody, we are at the welding shop. And we've laid all these guys out, these plates to be welded. So he's uh, picking up his uh, tip got a long stainless steel wire there because that's what they use as they weld. They just feed that wire in there. But right now he's going to just tack the corners so that it's all lined up and doesn't get out of alignment. Put a little tack on those. So these are all lined up. I've got them all labeled. I've got the little lines where they line up here. I've got the uh, bottom Hello everybody. All right, we got the TIG weld going now, all the way up and down, all these seams. Uh, we ran out of material and we had to use a little short piece to add on to here. And I, after all this stuff, I had four inches of material left. After everything I'd done, the, the side uh, tarpaulin braces, all that stuff. So that, my friends, is TIG welding, stainless steel. So what I'll do after this, he's going to flip it and do the other side. And then after this, uh, I'll take it uh, home and grind it all down and smooth it and polish it. Make it hey, everybody. Like it. Well, we're back to grinding and buffing. So these are the, the plates that hold the uh, center hole 
And again, I'm going to call them shark fins, which is the tarpaulin supports. Uh, uh, but you'll see we had the, we had them TIG welded. They're three three-inch strips. That's what I have. And then here's one that I have uh, did the first grind on. So this is the first grind here. But you can see all the weld is gone. You can't see where the welds were. It looks like one piece. Hey, everybody. As you can see, I've got three out of the four shark fin mounting plates polished. I'm working on the last one and I finally on these last two that I did I finally got a process that works. <clears throat> I, I grind down the welds with the uh, grinding stone. It's a round stone that fits on here. It's not a disc or a sanding disc. It's a, it's a grinding stone. Then after that I, I take a 120 sanding disc, the round red uh, sanding disc and I get all the scratches from the stone out. It does leave scratches from the 120. Then after that I take a 320, same thing, grinding disc, disc, uh, sanding disc, and I take all the scratches out from the 120 all back and forth. Then after that I take a 600, same thing, sanding disc, and get all the scratches out from the 320. And it winds up looking like basically like this, very smooth. I mean, these are little marks you can wipe off with your finger, I guess. But yeah, and then I actually took some sand and paper, some 1000, and just kind of went back and forth just to kind of take the, the top edges off of the uh, what, what the 600 scratches left. And you wind up with, well, after you polish. What I did too is I put my polish your wheel down here and I held my green uh, polishing compound on it and went back and forth so it's throwing it's going this way throwing the excess green compound on there so I'm just moving my wheel back and forth with the with that in continuous contact and it's throwing all this out there kind of laying it all down for me then I come back and start polishing well I've automatically already got all the compound on here that I need so that's a taken care of. So I don't have to stop. I, I can just non-stop polish this half. Then I'm going to do the other half next. But just to get it as shiny as that took a couple of minutes was it. So with that process of the stone, the 120, the 320, the 600, and then just the light uh, hand sanding with the 1000, uh, you can get to a pretty nice mirror, you know, f finish with this uh, polishing compound quickly so I hopefully I'm gonna knock this out but I, I mean all this was learning believe me the first one took four times this long the second one took three times this long <laughs> the last one probably gonna take about the same but that's where I really kind of got the process uh, worked out and now this one should I be able to knock that out real quick so as long as I'm doing it in those steps in those increments of sanding and grinding then uh, and then polishing uh, it's easy makes it way easier but it still takes quite a while it still takes an hour plus to to do one of these uh, you, you know from uh, the ground ground part that looks like that I mean from grinding the first grinding I left that like that so the epoxy will stick to it that's the bottom plate there the other ones just have the weld on them where I ground out the weld, and this this is the factory, you know, finish because this uh, welds onto the shark fin. The shark fin welds onto that. So that this the back of this will be against the front of that. So I may I may touch that up with with some uh, 320 or something like that, just to smooth it so it doesn't in effect scratch this when it's bolted on top of there. So that is it, and I'm going to keep polishing. And then I have to flatten these things out because, like, see, these things are warped. You, you see that? That's from the heat of the welding. Welding just warps everything. So now I got to uh, flatten that out. I'll show you my technique once I get that worked out. There's a magnet there. here. It won't even stick to it. It just falls off. See that? It won't even stick. It just falls right off. That's it. That's it. So, that's why I hey, think everybody. it's 316. You may be wondering, what is he doing now? Well, as I mentioned before, these P2 
pieces of stainless, when you weld them, look how they warped. They bend and all that. So what I'm doing, I came up with a contraption here with a C-clamp and a board on top to push it down. And I reinforced this bottom. This is super hard cocoa wood. And they've got cocoa wood that's hard like steel. I mean, you can't even drive a nail into it. That's what this is. Maybe this isn't that hard, but it's it's a hard cocoa wood. So I braced this because this would have cracked if I had put e enough pressure to bend this thing. But I'm using my C-clamp here and just twisting it and pushing down on that and bending it. This is my first attempt here, so we will see how it works out. All right, out. folks. It looks like we have straightened out this end of the stainless steel pretty good. So now i got to work on this end because this end... You can see it goes up here and then back down. It's kind of like a wave here. So I'm going to flip it around. Hey, and everybody. That we are, we got all these polished, as you can see. It's all polished and everything. And now I'm marking where the bolts will, will, will be. This is the permanent one. So this one gets epoxied and bolted to here through the mahogany 2 by 4s Okay. And this is where we're going to drill the bolt holes here. Okay. I went two inches in because we got about an inch here, three-fourths. You got another little bit here and then we should be into the mahogany here i don't want to get too far in because it doesn't push this edge down uh which may not be a big deal at all but still it's more it's kind of a balanced as you can see it's pretty balanced there so uh where the little cross marks are is where we're putting the bolts actually they're countersunk screw bolts like these they're a phillips head screw that's countersunk but it's a machine thread with a nut washer and lock washer on the bottom. So that's what we're doing here on this so, end. Anyway, we got this is the front one here that we're doing and the rear one. Uh, and again, these are ones that epoxy to the boat. So uh, this one goes here. Up against there, that's the center line right there. And it'll be all lined up center line wise. And this will epoxy and bolt. This one's a little bit warped too. You can see we got a little bit of a gap here, about a quarter inch gap that we gotta try to bend out. But I'm gonna put a cocoa wood here, turn it upside down, put a cocoa wood here, and then get the vices and try to uh, C clamp something and try to bend it over the cocoa wood and straighten it out. I did it yesterday a little bit but i need to do it some more so. all right everybody what we're doing we're clamping we're tick up we're tacking all the corners down and stuff trying to force this thing to be flat and then we're going to weld this to it and with a little cross brace too so once all that welding's done just the fact that this bar is welded to that and the corners the cross hairs will be flat these corners may try to bend up or down but we can uh uh, bend those uh, back. That's my theory. So right now, we're, I mean, because all this stainless, like I said, when you weld it, see those gaps? It warps. Welding anything warps stuff. But uh, right now, we're just trying to make it flat, force it flat, and then weld this on there because that's flat and straight. And the other cross angles are going to hold it flat. And we shall see. So we're going to be back with more welding. Hopefully, it'll stay flat. Bye for now. We just had it pop. It, it, it's loaded with spring. This thing is just loaded with spring. It doesn't want to lay flat. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to fight it. And hopefully, we'll win. Bye for now, hey everybody. We're back. And look at this. Check out the shark fin here, baby. We got it all braced up. Cross braced. Onto that stainless steel plate. And we're looking good. So right now we're just finishing uh, running the welds because everything was tacked. But still, we got to do the top. But I got to take this and bolt it onto the boat with all the other tarpaulin support brackets and the rear one, which is that one there, and this one here. Tomorrow we'll do that one. Uh, and then uh, I have to bolt all that down, get all that bolt it and then I can figure out how long and what angles and stuff I need for the the top of this what what it's gonna look like
we're kind of hopping around with the welding and stuff so not put too much heat in one spot and, and make the metal warp see like that did we just started at one end here and welded to the other end started back at the next strip and welded all the way there so it got really soaked but now we're just kind of doing a short little like a two or three inch strip and then moving someplace else doing two or three and then moving around and hopping around so that hopefully we don't heat soak it too much and don't have any warpage problems of course we're welding and it's metal so <laughs> it could always be some heat warpage problem so we will be back with more from my paradise on Medallion Island make those warps go away bye for now This is the angles we have to cut in order to, uh, because the angle is longer than the rectangle is wide, we have to notch it so it rests underneath, which is really good for extra strength. So you stop there and then cut that little step. That's where it's going to fit under. I'm going to have to go back to underneath here. It goes underneath there and pulls that up. So that's good. Extra strength. So we're doing that and we'll be back. We're going to do two of these, so after he cuts this, he'll just use that to copy into the next uh, piece of metal. Stainless steel, actually. And then we'll have both sides. Bye for now. All right, everybody. We got the first spark pin spaceship support bracket down on the left. On the right, depending on which side you're standing on. Yeah, we're working on the neck right here. That's it right there. So, he's just sharpening his pencil for his uh, TIG welder. So we're going to tack that one on and then we just go to town for welding because after that there's nothing left but welding. And we will be back with more Shark Fin 2 spaceship construction. Bye for now. Hey everybody, we are here today because we're proceeding with the tarpaulin support uh, phase, our, pro our uh, project, and what we need to do, this well this is where the tarp, this is where the stainless steel plate, the, the first stainless steel plate goes between here and this line here. That was a theoretical one where we might put it back here, but getting it forward is better. Um, but anyway, so we're grinding the paint off because epoxy, you can epoxy the paint, but it, it, the problem is not that the epoxy doesn't stick to the paint, it's that the paint here doesn't stick to the epoxy below. Uh, so we're grinding all this paint off in this section here, all this section here, so that whenever we, uh, and then we're going to put a thick layer of epoxy here, kind of like we did on the stairs. So it's a thick protective layer so that when you're climbing out of stairs with your, well, it just doesn't scratch up. So anyway, scratch I got to grind the this paint, paint off right now. Here and on the back, back there too. So that's what we're doing. And then next we're going to apply the non-sag epoxy. And the reason we're doing non-sag is because we want it to kind of set up, you know, like I said, about an eighth of an inch thick. We don't want it to just kind of flatten out and try to run off the side. So the non-sag is thicker and goopier. Uh, than the uh, regular marine epoxy but this is marine you can see high performance marine application this is the non-sag marine so we're going marine all the way all right everybody so as you can see the grinder did its job this is the epoxy primer and the epoxy paint thinner mixture uh, uh, we put the epoxy uh, 
paint thinner, lacquer thinner mixture, we watered it down and painted it on here. That is, everybody should do that to any wood that's going to be in the ocean or get wet. Any wood. That stuff water seals it. I mean, we had a piece of that laying in our boat down in there, and the typhoon came, and it laid in there. Water sealed with that epoxy lacquer thinner laid in there for more than a month waiting for the electric to be turned back on here so we could work on the boat. We didn't come back because there's no power. Uh, all the power lines were down from the ty typhoon, but it sat in there in the water for a month. We took it out, wiped it off completely dry. No water in the wood at all. It was fantastic. So that is a really important step. And you've probably seen that on one of my earlier bid videos, but that's what's on here. Now, even where this wood is here, you can see I got through their wood. You can still tell there's that epoxy uh, thinner uh, mixture uh, saturated because it soaks into the wood and soaks into marine plywood. Uh, epoxy will go into marine plywood. Uh, uh, other things don't right, soak everybody. into it. Now so we're well at the back here, ready, getting ready to grind it. Uh, I've got a nine inch mark here, but I don't have a line across there. I need a line so I know where to begin and end. So the same so is going to kind of butt up against here and go all the way out to this line, nine inches out. So uh, I'm going to mark all that, and then I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did to the other one. Just take that top layer of paint off, hopefully, and the uh, epoxy primer and epoxy lacquer thinner mixture will be still in the wood when I'm done. And then we'll start epoxying, laying down, uh, like I said, an eighth inch thick coating. Just, uh, well, you'll see. I won't bore you with the details right now. All right. Bye for now. We measured nine from here to here, and from here to here, and drew the line. This one's a little bit longer than nine, so that's uh, fine. And then we're just going to grind all the paint off here, and like I said, try to leave the epoxy primer and the epoxy lacquer thinner mixture uh, still uh, on the wood. And then we'll epoxy to that with the uh, non sac So I'm going to go to grinding, and we'll be back when it's done. You'll see the results right here on My Paradise from Battalion Island. Bye hey, for now. All right, we got the first kind of glob on there right now. It's not That's not the finished product, obviously, but we had to mix some more. So just to show you, we take equal parts of A and B, part A and part B. There's an A and a B right there. Equal parts of those. I use two different hoodie knives to get into the two different clean ones. To get it, I use a separate one to get that out, and another putty knife to get that out. Because if you stick whatever's in that one in that one, all of a sudden you're mixing your hardener into your main can, and vice versa, whatever way it goes. So, anyway, I'm gonna mix this up. We're gonna smear it out, and we'll be back with more from my paradise on Italian Island. Putting on the epoxy. Right, Bye for now. We now have the epoxy on here. Uh, as you can see, the thickness. Trying to get a thick layer, about an eighth of an inch thick. Because when we put the plate on here, this one's not too bad. It's it's pretty flat, so it's not going to try to dig into the in in through the paint and into the wood with the corners. But the uh, the rear one's really warped, so that's going to try to dig again. But it's, nonetheless, we're protecting the wood from uh, any abrasion. So there's that barrier between the plate that's bolted on there and the wood. So that should water seal everything. It should be sealed good and tight. So that's that one. And it's not perfectly flat in that because we're going to put more epoxy on here and then we're going to bolt the after we and then we're going to bolt the actual plate on. So it doesn't have to be flat. And anything we need to grind down with the grinder we can just grind it down if we want to make it smoother or flatter or whatever we want to do so that's easy enough and here's the rear we got it done we got it a little bit more thick which is really what we need here because like i said this plate that goes on here is really warped that when we welded it it really really twisted it and warped it so we got almost an eighth of an inch thickness on this bad boy here so once we're, we got the plate on, then we'll smooth all the edges and make them all nice and clean and rounded and stuff. It, you know, kind of like a nice round edge. But right now, we're just putting the protection on. The other thing that would be a problem, and kind of was a problem, on our stairs. 
because we did this exact same thing. We put it on thick, but look at the bubbles. You see that? That's what the non-stick or non-sag epoxy does. It, when it's on thick, if it's on thin, it doesn't do nothing. But you get these bubbles. But again, we don't really care because when we put the next layer of epoxy on, it just fills the holes or whatever. That's not going to be an issue. So anyway, we're done for now. We're going to let that dry, and then uh, it'll take about a day. It may take two days. I've got to polish this rear one because we tried to hammer it out flat and that kind of really scratched it up a lot so I gotta try to rebuff that thing re-sand it, grind it, buff it make it uh, shiny again uh, so we'll be back tomorrow I'll probably deal with that and then Saturday we'll actually uh, have the car back then too my brother-in-law is using the car uh, it's his car, not my car uh, and we're riding the motor cycle, so we can't bring the big uh, shark fins out yet until we get the car. We get the, they'll fit in the car. So yeah, we will be back. Just slapping on the epoxy.